President Adams wrote that James Otis's condemnation of General Warrants was the spark that fired the passion of the American Revolution. We were once outraged and dismayed and spurred to resist when British soldiers came knocking at our door with illegitimate warrants seeking taxes on our papers. Today, your government responds that there is no expectation of privacy once you consign your records to a third party. Your government argues that the Fourth Amendment applies not at all to your bank records, your visa bill, your internet searches or purchases or emails. If not resistance, shouldn't there at least be outrage? One need not conjure up images of 1984 to be alarmed. Imagine for a moment what information can be gathered from your visa bill. Whether you gamble, whether you smoke, whether you drink and how much, what magazines or books you read, whether you see a psychiatrist or not, what medicines you take, all of this private information and more can conceivably be deduced from your visa bill. Are we so afraid of terrorists that we are willing to give up the very freedoms that separate us from them? Recently, a group of senators sympathetic to the surveillance state emerged from the White House and proclaimed that no Americans were being spied upon. In the blink of an eye, the surveillance state was made to disappear through the ledger domain of defining it out of existence. They decreed that collecting your data, that collecting millions of your records daily is not spying. It reminds me of a scene from the Book of Laughter and Forgetting by Milan Kundera. He tells of a scene in post-World War II Prague. He describes a balcony. The communist Gottwald smiles to the crowd. It's snowing. His comrade, Clementus, offers him his fur hat. Gottwald dons the hat. Later, Clementus is purged and hanged. Photos of the famous occasion are airbrushed to remove the image of Clementus. As Kundera puts it, nothing remains of Clementus but the fur hat on Gottwald's head. Kundera captures the heart of the debate. The struggle of man against power is the struggle of memory against forgetting. The struggle against power is not only against forgetting, but against allowing the state to define away its usurpations. Will we allow defenders of the surveillance state to airbrush history and define away the notion of spying? Will we sit idly by as our expectation of freedom is defined downward? Will we be sunshine patriots or will we stand up like free men and women and say, enough is enough. We want our freedoms back.